Woo, great day, folks. It's Yappy uh, from Yappy's Beach Chat on Facebook, and you can also find me at swarmremover.com on the old uh, interweb. And today I'm going to share with you a little design that I came up with on making a cheap, affordable swarm trap. Um, what we started out with was a 18 gallon plastic storage tote. Uh, I bought mine at the local Wally Mart and I took a, one of my frames with me to the store, made sure it all fit up in there nice. It's a little bit deeper than I like, but it's going to be very functional for what I want to do. Now what you see on the table is you're going to see some of the tools that we're going to use on this. I've got a little small hacksaw, i got a cordless drill, I've got uh, some wire cutters, I've got some plastic wire ties, my razor knife, my black marker, and I've, the best part about this whole setup is my Swarm Commander. Uh, you can find them at uh, swarmcommander.com. Uh, it's a product that uh, I've used for the last couple years and uh, I've been very successful with it. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. That's my Swarm Commander hanging lure right there. Uh, this is the new product that they just came out with. That's the spray. Uh, that's the uh, single use uh, last for 30 days plus um, lure that you can hang up. I like to actually use it as an air freshener in my car, but we won't go there. Okay, so I'm going to take everything and set it off to the side real quick and I'm going to kind of go through this understanding of what and how I do when I make my little setup. So, you'll see I've already got some of the holes made and marked out, but when we start this deal, I'm also, I apologize, here's my secret weapon also, is old drawn comb. That's just, it was a dead out that I had, saved the comb up. Uh, you see, yes, and you're going to ask me, well, it's got a little bit of mold on it. Not a problem. The bees are going to take, and they're going to love the fact they got this. It's going to draw them in a lot better uh, on top of that with the Swarm Commander. And this will get cleaned up. The bees are going to take, and they'll clean all this up. They'll polish themselves back out, and they'll go right into working and laying in that just to, just lickety-split. So, um, But I'm going to kind of show you how I measured this out. Really right there, that just about will set right on the bottom. So you, if you go down a little bit lower than what I did, I kind of have my frames sit where they're about like that. And the reason I went lower instead of higher in my box is so that when I remove the dowel, if this was on the inside, it has just a short little bit where it's going to fall. And you don't knock bees off, you don't pinch bees, you don't make them mad. I don't want to see a lot of the beginner people that are getting into this and then get all upset because the bees are getting them all tore up when they try to get these things out of the box. So what what I'm going to do is, is I'll show you when I tilt the box what it looks like with everything in there and we'll go from there. So my first deal is is that I choose where I want to drill my holes. I want, I want, there's a lip on this particular box that's right here. And then I'll turn around and I take my marker and I mark that over there. I mark it over there. And it's right just about where the curve starts. Just about where the curve starts. Same thing on the back side. Right about where the curve starts, right about where the curve starts. What I'll do is, is I'll take and I'll set the drill on there, run my hole, set it on, run my hole, turn it back around, same thing, run the hole, run the hole. So we're done with the first set, okay? Now, now we actually are going to get ready to do the dowel rod. I've already cut these down, and you just take the dowel rod, insert it in the hole, take this one insert it in the hole. You can actually run it through just to make sure that you're lined up good. Run it through, take it back out. But now, that's what we'll have. We'll have it set up in there and now it's ready for the frames. I'm going to take my first frame and I'm actually going to take all five of them and set them down in here. we got five full frames drawn. You can adjust this out if you've got foundation frames and just one frame in here. That's all you really need is just one frame of drawn comb. Then I raise that up just enough to start sliding these in, and I start feeding the dowel rod through the inside lip of the frame. Now, let me take one of these out, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. That's what it's going to look like inside. It's just going to sit on top of those dowels, so that way, what little bit of adjustment that, the, that it needs when it's hanging in the tree, it can make. All right, And then you can space them out, but that's all it's going to look like on the inside. So I got those set in there, I feed them through on one side, raise it up, set it in the hole. I just do the same thing on the other side. 
run it through the corners of the frames, raise it up, set it in the hole, feed it through. Now all I got to do is just adjust the back side. Now you see how much I've got sticking out the back. This is the side that's going up against the tree. You'll understand what here in a way. But if your rod's coming out too far, this may end up hindering this getting as flush to the tree as possible. So just give it a little bit of lift that doesn't extend up much further than the top of your box. And there's the inside of my frame. Now, I will, I'll take mine and straighten them out. I will space them just a little bit so that it takes up a little void. I'm not worried about B space at this point. All I want to do is give them enough room where they can get in there. They can go back and forth and, and, they, and I know that I'm not pushing everything up against them. So, now we got the front. Now we've got a little bit extra hanging out the front right here. You can cut this if you'd like to. That gives me enough to grab a hold of and pull that back out when I'm ready to take these out. There's one thing I want you to be cautious with. These front, the frames, like I said earlier, are sitting on a dowel rod that is elevated up off the bottom a little bit. Because it's elevated a little bit off the bottom, when you take that out, don't drop it down and starts pinching bees and making them mad and then you got your bit mad bees that are all over you while you're doing while you're taking these out to put them in a nuke. So just keep that in mind. Alright. Now uh, as you can see right here is where I made my entrance. The reason why I made my entrance there is because it is a little bit slick. Now there, it's not smooth as ice. And I believe that there's going to be enough for the bees to hang on to here, but I would prefer them to want to land more up on the top or land on the tree trunk that it's on to and march into my box. Um, you could adjust this however you want to. You may want to turn around and put it to the side in the back that is close to where the tree trunk is and let them all just gather up there and walk in. The bees really don't care. All right. Now, I'll take and I'll, when I go to... to Actually, after I've caught my swarm and I want to bring this home, I'll take and I'll put a stuffed little rag in here. I may take and put grass, a handful of grass, whatever it is, just to close this hole up so that I can transport them home. The one last thing that I want to share with you before we get going on too far was I told you um, about the zip ties. Okay, what I've done is, as I've got in here, I'm going to take the top off and I'll show you kind of what I'm doing. I drilled a hole right through here on my lid, top and bottom. I don't want to go too far back so that it creates a, a little spot for the water, any water to come in through here. So I've got those drilled on there as well as through my lid. I can set that on there. Set my lid down, got my holes lined up. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to run a zip tie through. Make sure everything's lined up straight. Boom, that'll be fine. Okay, let's talk about bait in the hive. Because it's going to be a little bit difficult depending on what you're uh, what you're using. Some people may, like I said, use the lemongrass oil. Some may just go with the drawn comb. All right. This is my Swarm Commander lure. I've already opened it up once. Let me show it to you again. All right. There it is. This is a new product that they've got out this year. It's already pre-scented. And from what I believe, check them out on SwarmCommander.com. But I believe this is a good 30-day lure. Um, I, I I can't remember the exact time frame. And let me double check on here and what it says on here. Yeah, you're going to have to, I apologize, check them out uh, on, on uh, swarmcommander.com. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'll pull one of these sides out. I'm going to put this in the back away from where my entrance is. And I'm going to slide that right on top of one of these dowels. Let that hang on that dowel off the back side. Put that right back in. And now I'm baited. So now I've got my lure in place. The last thing we were talking about is hanging it on a tree. So let me turn this around. Now this will be the back side. I've got two holes that I drilled up in there. And I've got old electric fence wire. I can run that fence wire through here. Come out the other side. And I can, this is just something I had handy. Another idea is uh, ratchet straps. Uh, people that uh, got motorcycles or you've used cargo straps before, they're only about an inch wide and they're usually 15 feet long. It's got a little ratchet and they got hooks on the end of them. All right. Well, you can take that ratchet strap and adjust it out to where 
you run it through here and it comes out you got a hook on one end you'll put your strap back through the ratchet and it's got a hook on it now you could wrap that around the back side or anywhere around the tree and then you could ratchet it down and pull this up against the tree just be careful doing that that you don't do it so tight that it pulls this up and it messes up your lid well like I said what I've used is the I've used the bailing wire and I can take this and run it through I've got all kind of excess on here and I like this because I can take it I can just wrap it up real quick in my hand it's on there all right now boom that's ready to go I ain't gonna lose that I got my swarm lure inside I got my adjustments made sounds good I'm ready to close this thing up the last thing I'm gonna do and don't do like I've done at least the first two times on this is put these on before I put in my swarm lure or put on my strap take and just secure that on there make sure it's good and tight we'll do the same in the front make sure it's good and tight close it this on for me personally I like to cut off the excess cut off the excess and boom all done so, here we go. That's it in a nutshell. $7 swarm trap is what it cost me. A uh, dollar or two more or less for whatever your retail prices are in your area. Uh, don't forget uh, our entrance hole towards the top. And one other thing, you'll see that I got a number on here. I'm going to number these just so I can turn around and keep track of it. If you're a person that likes to take notes, you'll remember that you write down. Uh, swarm trap number four and you can start keeping notes of where you got it you would follow that into the hive as, as whatever however you number it and then you would write notes as uh, hive uh, number four was acquired by swarm trap uh, at such and such location uh, just an idea something for you to keep up with as far as notes go and well that's about it the only other thing I'd suggest write swarm trap on here honeybees caution Put your phone number on it, whatever you want to. Put something on the front of this that indicates what it is and your phone number to be contacted at. Not everybody's going to hang a swarm trap up just in their yard. You may find a piece of property and get permission from your the property owner. I always recommend that. But somebody's going to go by and see this hanging in a tree, and if it doesn't say what it is on it, somebody's going to kind of go, huh, and start throwing rocks at it or try to uh, pull it down or whatever. And now they're going to ruin your, your $7 swarm trap. It's got a few frames in it, and it may possibly already have bees in it, and then they're going to hurt themselves. So, at worst case scenario, you understand, put your phone number on it so that they can contact you. Well, guys, that's it. That's the, uh, that's the basics of what we made and how we put it together and what I did. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the footage now, and I'll show you where I hung it up in a tree. I I'd hung mine about uh, 12 foot up on a cedar tree and had a found a real good place to where I could secure it in there and even if the weather gets really rough or the winds get up it's not going to hurt anything. Um, one other thing I'd like to say, I, I explained to you on this how you can hang this up against a tree. We well, can also hang this from a tree limb. A tree limb goes this way, but if you take any, this wire and you actually had holes on both sides and, and a w double same wire set up in the front as you do in the back, you can hang it up over a tree limb and you can tie it off and try to secure it up to the top side instead of the back. Just another option as far as what you could do as far as hanging it. But there it is, guys. That's my uh, 15 minutes of explanation. Let's take a minute and go over and see what it looks like in a tree. Hung up in the tree, got the wire tying it to the back, found a nice little spot where we can hang it up and have a little protection up amongst everything. And uh, sorry for the barking dog, guys. But we got it all secured up. So we've got our swarm commander lure inside, and we'll check this thing here in a couple of weeks. Give it a sniff and make sure that we can still smell it good. But between the drawn comb, the swarm commander spray, uh, I think we're really, really going to do good with this this year. That's uh, the spur of the moment off the hip. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, thanks for checking out our video. Have a great day.